Hi now, it's Dr. G. I'm going to go through the questions that you gave me. Some of the questions I could answer fairly long, but I'm going to make them short and sweet. So question number one, can you tell me about your past work experience? In my case, over the years, my work experience has been primarily in the last 10, 15 years, a teacher. And I've taught at different levels from college to high school to middle school and uh, also adult high school at this current time. Uh, before that, and even currently, I'm still a financial advisor and I have, carry a Series 7 license and a 26 license. So I still do that for family, friends, and friends of friends. Question number two. How does your experience equip you to be successful in this position and how does it replace to what you did your day before? <clears throat> it equips me, I'm equipped to t be a teacher for many reasons, but primarily because I had wonderful training at the University of Nevada, Reno, and I had an advisor, Dr. Ferraro, who was very helpful and took me under her wing for several years. Additionally, I've had a lot of experience as a teacher in uh, a lot of ways. One thing I forgot to mention as part of my work experience is I've spent four years of teaching what they call dual credit, both high school and college credit at the same time. Question three, what were your main responsibilities as a teacher? Number one was to make sure that the curriculum was clear. That required me to write a syllabus, especially on a college level. Syllabus simply meaning the guidelines for the whole course and what we're going to cover. The other thing is being uh, prompt and um, sticking to the time, sticking to uh, getting the grades updated for the students, communicating with the students, keep the, keeping them informed, and planning each class so with flexibility so that there would be the opportunity for students to learn more easily. And uh, we can go into great detail there, but I'm going to be making it short and sweet. Number four, have you ever worked for Tesla before? No, I have never worked for Tesla. However, uh, I do... Uh, appreciate the fact that Tesla has a, a facility here in the Reno, Northern Nevada area. Some of my former students actually work at Tesla and one of my best friends and a person who I, I frequent their business, they have a business out at Tesla, a coffee shop. So I really appreciate what they have done for the community. Uh, motivation, behavioral question. In your experience, what draws forth your energy and effort to go the extra mile? Push you harder and spend more time. Do whatever it takes to get the job done. I'm motivated uh, to get the job done and to do extra work because I, I really appreciate quality. I like quality in my own life and the way I live my life. And so I try to reach a high standard in relationship uh, with the students and with the, the uh, place that I'm working. It could be a high school, could be a university, could be a college. And when I do that, I know there's a greater response from the students and they appreciate it. And one of, for example, one of the things I do along these lines is, as I set up a texting, uh, group texting with each class that I do so they can stay in touch with me and I can stay in touch with them more easily. Going on to the next page now. Describe the work environment or culture in which you are most productive. Well, for me, I'm most productive when the place that I work appreciates what I do, uh, backs me up for what I do, and uh, whenever I have a difficulty or something I don't understand or don't know, I can go to someone uh, within the organization and they can help me out. I can give lots of examples here. But say, for example, uh, my students need to produce a video. Well, at the University of Nevada, Reno, they have a video lab and they have a trainer there. So I could take my students there and they will train them step by step to create a video. Next, 
What would make you lose interest in your position? It takes an awful lot for me to lose interest. I would say I lose interest if the students are unresponsive and don't seem to follow direction or they don't show up or they don't care or they are not motivated. Uh, I just feel like there's no teaching teacher-student flow at that point. However, in most cases, I'll try to reestablish that by sticking with my plan and finding out another way to go in order to create that uh, level of interest. So it takes an awful lot for me to lose interest. Next, what would make you lose motivation to be promoted into a higher role? Uh, it takes an awful lot for me not to be motivated. I'm very self-motivated within myself. Uh, so I'm not really externally motivated. So inner motivated to me means that you find another way, you go in another direction, you do your best to seek out another avenue. Uh, for example, just recently, the, one of the videos did not play in class. It was somehow blocked. So I found another way to go by using YouTube. So I reestablished my motivation to get that lesson accomplished. Uh, next is a decision-making section. What if a superior or boss asked you to do something out of job responsibility? How would you proceed? Generally speaking, if I have a, a superior or boss who asks me to do something, nine times out of ten, I'm going to say yes. If I don't understand what to do or it doesn't seem it's something I can do, I'll ask for assistance. Who can I go to? Uh, will you give me more time to accomplish it? So I try to establish a communication with the superior to make sure that there's cooperation in achieving the next goal or the next step and what they've required. Next, can you tell me about a time you encountered a colleague that was struggling to perform? Uh, from time to time, I, a colleague to me might be a, another teacher. Uh, sometimes I might ask them, you know, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What are you going through? They could be tired. They could be working when they should be home and they're a little bit sick. So uh, I'm trying to think of a specific example when recently that happened. I can't think of one offhand. Uh, it can happen more often when I'm in uh, middle school or high school than in a university. In a university classroom, you're pretty much on your own. Uh, you don't really interact with the colleagues that much or other teachers. Or at a high school, uh, your teachers in the different departments uh, will help you out. I did recently have difficulty with showing a video in one of the classrooms when I was at Reno High School. And I went to the head of the science department and he helped me out and we determined that the video was no longer available. So I needed to come up with something new or different that would actually do similar or the same thing in helping the students learn a certain topic. Next page. Uh, do you know what a PPE is? No, I have no idea what that stands for. And next, what was the expectation of PPE in your previous companies? I'm not sure what the PPP initials stand for. I wish I would have asked you. Would you be comfortable wearing PPE? Don't know what that is. Four, what would you do if a team member neglected to take PPE seriously? Obviously, PPP refers to some sort of process or procedure that's expected of, uh, of an employee. What is, a, what is a superior, what if a superior asked you to do something out of standard that you personally think risks safety, how would you proceed? Okay, so it sounds like the PPP, the PPE has to do with some sort of safety standard. If I was asked to do something out of that standard and I knew that it would be dangerous or difficult or bring harm to myself or other people, employees, I would probably bring it to the superior's attention just by discussing it. Perhaps they weren't aware that that uh, could happen uh, or they're being a little bit risky and I need to say something. Uh, if, the, if the person refuses to listen and we find some middle ground or some other way to go, then I would probably, if it thought it was dangerous, I would actually go to uh, somebody who was more superior than they are. So 
There you go. Six on this page. Tell me about the time you witnessed a coworker performing something that was unsafe on the job. What steps did you take? Well, in my case, because I'm a teacher and a writer and a financial advisor, I don't really come across a situation like that very often where they might be operating machinery and it might be dangerous for them. I do see situations where I see a student who's not feeling well, who's sick, and I will go up to them and ask, hey, you know, you're not, look, you don't look too good today or something's wrong. What's going on? And encourage them to take care of themselves. Just recently, I had a student who was not feeling very well. I, did, I brought it to their attention and I could see they were getting sick in class. So I went over and told them, just get up and go. You can go home. You can take care of it later. You got to take care of yourself. Next page. Uh, feel free to come up with potential safety scenarios or questions that are important to you. Okay, I'm not sure what that is at this point, so I'm going to move on to the next, the topic of passions. How do you ensure that your personal level of motivation is high on a daily basis? Uh, I'm motivated when I take care of myself. In other words, get a good night's sleep, have a healthy diet, uh, keep a clear mind, have some relaxation in my life. That might include um, meditation, a quiet walk, some exercise, and so on. So I need to take care of myself to really be on a highly motivated level. If my energy level is low and I don't feel good, it's hard for me to be that motivated. How do you stay positive during stressful situations? I've learned over the years to be less reactive to a stressful situation. I acknowledge it, but uh, one of the techniques that I use or methods is just take a deep breath, go into neutral, pause, count to 10, uh, let the initial wave of uh, difficulty pass, and keep uh, a clarity of mind, which often gives me several solutions to whatever the situation might be, as opposed to getting uh, swept along in a difficult current. Pause for a sip of coffee. What interests you about Tesla's mission? Well, that doesn't really apply to me, but I do have missions for my jobs. And I, I really probably wouldn't take a job that wasn't in alignment with some of my own interests and mission in life. Uh, I really, as a teacher, I would like to see people learn to develop their minds, learn to develop their curiosity, learn to develop lifelong learning, learn to develop critical thinking skills so they can look at a problem or situation and sort out the facts from fiction. Work ethic is the next topic. Describe what is a stressful situation for you in a work environment. For me, when it gets stressful is when there's too many, for example, there are students that sometimes get out of control, and sometimes that can even lead to a classroom that gets out of control. Too much talking, uh, too much running around, too much not paying attention, too much hostility, maybe two students are conflicting with each other. So uh, what I try to do is do the best I can to handle it. And this may require me to move some student to another spot. Maybe they're working with a group where they aren't compatible. They need to work with another group in order to have better cooperation. Sometimes you need to uh, talk, take them aside and see what we can do to improve the situation. So what I'm looking for in a stressful situation is options. What are the options that would make most sense to make the stressful situation less stressful? Moving on to the next page. Describe a time when you were not satisfied with your work. What would you have done differently? <clears throat> From time to time, uh, the plan that I had for a class isn't a plan that's working. In fact, it, it's uh, found to be boring. It's found to have not good energy. It's a little laborious. Uh, the students don't like it too much. So I have to learn how to think on my feet, and I like to have a backup plan. Uh, so I have another way to go, possibly that might be more effective. So that's what I would do. Next, 
Can you share a specific time when you experienced a challenge and how you overcame it? Okay, well, uh, there's so many. We are always confronted with different challenges in, in current situations. Uh, in my case, uh, I notice when I try to keep track of who's coming to class and who isn't. So I have a sign-in sheet and I keep track of that. And I have little code letters, H for health, W withdrawn from class, uh, uh, don't know, D for don't know, need to find out. So this helps me adjust so I can find out what's going on. For example, recently I had a student who did not text me that they were out sick. I, I do request that students give me a text. I give out my phone number the first day of class and have people enter it into their phone so they could get a hold of me. But I followed up with a text message after a week and I found out they'd been sick for a week. So that was a challenge and I overcame it by finding out what's going on rather than just writing that person off and not communicating with them anymore, making sure that they can get caught up and give them some options to make up the work. Tell me about a time where you had to work under pressure. Well, inevitably, there are going to be times when there's a lot of pressure. For example, when there's a deadline. Uh, in, my, in a teaching profession, there are deadlines for grades, especially at the end of a quarter or semester. And it's something you can't put off. Procrastination is the... Uh, the most difficult thing. If you fall into procrastination or putting things off uh, tendency, then the pressure tends to build. And if you avoid the, that pressure, it gets even stronger. So the key to me is solve your problem before you get it. Look at see what's coming and see if you can make an adjustment and um, bypass the difficulty or the pressure as best you can. Uh, sometimes, so to me, mostly it's deadlines. If there's a deadline coming up, or even if a student hasn't dealt with some several de deadlines, you need to find out why they can't do it. Uh, for example, they might have a family issue. They might have a working too many hours in a job issue, or they might have uh, emotional issues because of some of the difficulties they've gone through in their life right now. Perhaps there's a death in the family, or there's somebody who's close to them who's sick. So you need to gather more facts and more information about what is causing the pressure. Okay, tell me about a time you went above and beyond your generous responsibilities. This comes up in my particular situation as a teacher uh, to find out what's going on in a person's life without being too personal. So a lot of times I just like to do a little chit-chatting with students like, how's your day going? How are you feeling? What are you doing this weekend? What did you do this weekend? Just to open up a line of communication. Uh, for example, uh, I like to find out if a, tu a student likes to read. So if they have a book out when they come in to the class and I ask them, what are you reading? What's going on? Uh, so oftentimes I'm going beyond my normal responsibilities and when I find out something new, I, I can actually maybe pass along some information to them that could be very helpful for their goals and their sense of uh, passion for the future. Next, we're going to go to teamwork. In your opinion, what makes great a great team? To me, a great team gets down to the willingness to communicate, cooperate, and care about other people. Uh, collaboration is a big deal in, in today's world not only in the classroom, but also especially in business. Uh, if you can't get along with other people, okay, find a way to get along. How can you better communicate? Find out another way. This requires the ability to not only speak, but to listen and be empathetic. Empathetic means feeling what the other person is feeling to some degree. When you do that, team building becomes a lot easier. Also, if there's a difference of opinion, uh, you don't have to argue. You can simply state your opinion and say why with evidence possibly. Uh, here's what I know and here are the facts behind it or the evidence I can provide you. And maybe there's a willingness to cooperate. To me that means fun sometimes finding a middle ground 
uh, not always having it your way, but maybe there's a better way if there's a compromise between yourself and other people in your team. Another factor for me is how big is the team? Uh, if the team has got too many people, it gets a little more difficult sometimes. Uh, group dynamics become uh, something to think about. Next, do you perform better when you work on a team or when you are working by yourself? Uh, it depends on the situation. Sometimes uh, if I know what to do and if I start working with the team, uh, it's actually going to make the process more difficult. The work is going to become more uh, tedious. It's going to take longer. It's going to be not meeting the requirements or the deadline. Uh, so there's a fine line there between working alone or individually and working with a team. Ideally, you are willing to put aside, you know, the only way is my way and go, okay, what are some other ways that'll work better uh, or produce the goal that you really want to have? So it's a tricky thing. Every situation is unique and different, so it's hard to answer it generally. You'd have to have a specific situation to really determine what would be best uh, between team and working individually. Can you give an example when you have successfully coached a member of, of, of a team? Well, in my case, because I do project-based learning as a teacher in most cases, uh, that means each team, usually the teams are made up of no more than three or four students. Uh, I try to go around and find out what's going on in their project. Sometimes there's like an impasse or an inability of one person to work with another, or somebody has a great idea, but they're afraid or shy to express it to the, to the rest of the team. So sometimes I'll, I'll ask them to talk to me right there, and, and maybe they'll open up and they'll share that information. And then the other team members go, gosh, I wish you would have told me that. That sounds like a great idea, or that's a great way to go. So, so specifically, I'd have to give you a certain situation where I could have a memory uh, when that's happened. But uh, it's, again, listening and finding out the facts, the evidence is really critical there. Next, share a time when you experienced working with a difficult coworker on a team. How was the coworkers difficult and what did you do to resolve the situation? Uh, from time to time, personalities do not blend and it's a very uh, uncomfortable situation. Uh, sometimes a person doesn't really tell you what's on their mind and they just uh, have an attitude like, they're just not going to tell you. They don't like you. There's just sort of an instinctive not liking of the other person and there's just a, things go to a grind to a halt. So in my case, uh, I'm willing to ask questions. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to set aside what I think is right and sometimes what I think is right is based on lots of experience so it might I might be right but uh, right is not always right <laughs> in other words uh, you might be able to convince the other person uh, that your your rightness is what makes most sense in the situation and sometimes by putting aside your rightness and your uh, you think you know it and listening to another alternative and coming up again with the word compromise. What is the middle ground that will be best to get this project uh, on, the, on the road or the project completed? What was the worst experience of working in a team? Offhand, I really can't think of one myself right now. Uh, since I don't work in a team situation day to day, uh, but if, hypothetically, if I was in a worse situation, I need to take a look at all the facts as best I can and find out who's involved and not be shy or hold back from finding a way to communicate that information, whether it's through text message, it's email, in person. When it's really, really difficult, I prefer to be in person so that you can see the different uh, expressions on a person's face, you can hear the tone of voice, you can look at the body English of a person. And sometimes you can really uh, come up with a resolution that way, rather than just holding on to what you think is right. Next, what would you do in a stressful situation? I think I've answered that question. First of all, I need to be aware I'm, I'm under a lot of stress. 
and I need to learn to, I need to remember to let go uh, and let things flow. If I get too rigid and too stuck on the stress, oftentimes the clarity of what to do next is just not there. You become blinded by your own stressful situation. So a little bit of detachment, a little bit of non-identifying, a little bit of going into neutral is very, very helpful. How do you handle yourself in an environment of high pressure and turbulence? Well, I pretty much just answered that. First of all, uh, you have to realize if the stress becomes so tr difficult and so turbulent, even taking a five minute break is really important. I might step outside, I might walk around the building, I might take a short uh, uh, quiet snack time, I might have a cup of coffee, I might go into a break room or sit outside in nature and just enjoy the moment as opposed to being overloaded by the feeling of stress. What do you know about Tesla? Well, in my case, I don't know a lot other than the fact that my son has a Tesla car. Uh, and I really appreciate the fact that uh, Tesla has a lot of different things going as far as the, the batteries, the elect using electrical power as opposed to using uh, carbon-based fuel. So beyond that, I don't know. I've met some people that work for Tesla. I haven't heard any real negative uh, comments at this point. So I know they're very innovative and I appreciate the fact that uh, Tesla is looking toward the future as opposed to trying to recreate the past in order to improve our environment. What do you do if you don't like your last job? If I don't like, okay, not sure I understand that question. Uh, if I don't like a current job, I try to change how I handle it and do, try to find some middle ground, try to find some other ways, try to find some alternative things will use my skills more effectively, that gives me more of a sense of energy and positive feelings. Uh, but if the job is very difficult in the sense that it maybe it's not best for me to be in that job anymore, I need to pay attention to that. It might be time to look at some new alternatives and other job opportunities for the future. If you have a problem with a colleague, how would you solve it? I pretty much have answered this. Uh, I'd rather not be impulsive in solving the problem. I like to contemplate, meditate, relax, let it go, review it, look for more facts and information. Uh, but ultimately, if it's really critical to the job, I need to find a way to meet with that person and see if we can't communicate something that's uh, more effective for the future. So it does take a little bit of not denying the problem or the difficulty with another person. You need to find out why there is lack of connection, lack of cooperation. Uh, might be something that I'm doing inadvertently. I don't even know that I'm doing it. it might be the tone of voice. It might be my attitude. It might be my personality is something that they're not used to and don't like. And it might be something about them I don't like based on my past experience. So looking for some middle ground in order to work out the situation. Uh, what, a, what pleasant experience brought me from my last job? So a positive experience. For me, a positive experience would be I, I noticed through uh, observation, through communication, through a friend's comment, through something I read, something I heard, something I saw, well, it gives me like, that's something I would be interested in and like to do. Uh, one thing that recently happened is I work at the Rise High School. And the Rise High School is an adult high school. And after working with students who were under 18 for many years, and sometimes they're just irresponsible, they don't follow through, uh, they're still growing up, and they sometimes you have to deal with all the little problems that they have. I find usually working with adults is actually more enjoyable because they have jobs, they have families, they have responsibilities, they have things that they have to do, so they want to get there. They're better communicators sometimes. Sometimes they really put more effort into what they do and don't take their opportunities for granted, but are very grateful for them. And uh, what has been the mistake in your life that you regret? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I thought about this before. 
I don't really care for the word regret. I would say more that I would do it a different way if I know what I know now. Uh, you can call that a regret if you like. I call it more like learning from experience. So if I look back uh, on mistakes that I've made, so to me, I, I've even written about this in some of my writings, a mistake is you can take another take, like in the movies. So uh, a director of a movie will say, let's do another shot, let's do another take, let's redo it. And when I do that, things work out. For example, maybe I'm driving a certain route and there's construction. Well, I pay attention to that and I start thinking about another route to take. If I keep taking the same route, I am going to regret taking that route because it's going to take a long time to get there. It's going to be frustrating. There are going to be stops along the way. So paying attention to things that maybe you feel uncomfortable about. Okay, and the final question here now. What do you know about safety accessories for working personnel? That doesn't really apply to my job, although I need to pay it as a teacher, you pay attention to the student's behavior. Sometimes they're having personal problems uh, that might be psychological. So uh, social, emotional learning, they call it in education, S-E-L. Uh, how can you help promote that for your students more? And get that in. occasionally. I've even seen situations where I've called uh, the counselors and asked the counselor to talk to the student because I know there's something difficult going on. And so I don't know if it would be safety accessories because I'm not in a work situation where that's important. I see you have a list of all kinds of different things that are needed, but uh, we don't really have that in, uh, in teaching so much. It's more of a psychological issue. Uh, I've had students who really need to see a counselor because something difficult is going happening in their life. And so I'll offer to I'll contact the counselor and for example, recently I had one where I had a student with very odd behavior. They would get up and walk around the room just haphazardly. And then I called, contacted the counselor and they told me that the, their uh, uh, dad passed away about three months ago. So they're a little bit out of sorts as a person. Uh, he happened to be a very good student, so I thought it very odd that he would just do this random walking around room. So we were, we were able to get understand and I found a middle ground to be able to handle a situation better rather than be too uh, authoritarian with the rules with that person, give him a little more freedom. With that, I think we've finished the, the video. I'm going to now end it up and I'm going to get it fixed up for you and then I'm going to email it off to you. Thanks now.